I'm meteorologist Brian Peters with your weather extreme video for this Friday, June the 24th. And we've got some interesting weather ahead of us and some changes coming about in our weather pattern. There's the satellite image this morning across the southeastern United States, and we have a good deal of clouds, especially across the northern third of the state of Alabama, thanks to a couple of MCSs, mesoscale convective systems, that have moved into Tennessee and are continuing to move and dissipate as they head to the southeast, primarily into north Georgia, but we're seeing a few showers uh, develop across the Tennessee River Valley counties. It looks like that's where the primary uh, development will be and any mesoscale boundaries that are left behind by those MCSs. The uh, surface map features high pressure over the southeastern U.S., but we do have that front that's coming into the northern reaches of the southeastern U.S., but not likely to do anything other than dissipate before we get another one first thing in uh, next week, pri primarily on Tuesday. In the upper air uh, pattern, at 500 millibars, roughly about 20,000 feet, we have this uh, large heat ridge, and you can kind of see that ring of fire of the thunderstorms kind of around the uh, edge of that ridge. Temperatures this morning across central Alabama were in the 70s for the most part, a little bit cooler over in the east section of the state. Uh, but uh, even across the Tennessee River Valley counties, those temperatures up a little bit thanks to the clouds. Radar shows uh, the dissipating MCS over eastern Tennessee coming into north Georgia, and then the other one uh, in middle Tennessee, kind of uh, a straddling middle in west Tennessee that is moving into uh, potentially north Alabama, but it is also dissipating. Watch warning map is relatively clear. We do have a couple of uh, heat advisories, the orange areas over the southeast U.S., and those uh, bright reddish-pink values are... Uh, high fire danger uh, along the uh, eastern slopes of the Rockies. QPF-wise, we're looking up for some rain. It looks like probably uh, the better chance is going to come Monday and Tuesday, but over the weekend, we're likely to see scattered showers just about any time. Storm Prediction Center is out looking two slight risk areas, one over the Carolinas and Virginia for today, day one, and a second area centered primarily on the northern half of North Dakota. On day two, the slight risk is now moved from North Dakota into the western Great Lakes states, including parts of Iowa, Wisconsin, and Minnesota, and the upper peninsula of Michigan. And then for day three, which is Sunday, the slight risk is primarily in the eastern uh, Great Lakes area, primarily in Michigan, with a marginal risk uh, stretching along that front that is likely to become uh, a factor for us uh, by Monday and Tuesday. And uh, the uh, National Hurricane Center is uh, watching this area of disturbed weather. We mentioned this yesterday, and it still shows very little signs of any kind of development. As a matter of fact, it looks like it's going to continue on a west-northwest course into the east coast of Mexico without any further development. All right, the 060 GFS model run. And there's the uh, surface high pressure settling in over the Gulf of Mexico and uh, allowing uh, us to see some scattered showers. To, uh, the uh, upper air pattern features this huge ridge that is bulging up through the central part of the country. But notice that really big closed low coming into the northwestern uh, U.S., corner of the U.S. That is going to be moving uh, across the Canadian-U.S. border or, or along the border. And that's going to beat that ridge back into the western states. Uh, looking at the HRR briefly, uh, you can see that the HRR is focusing on the possibility of thunderstorms developing uh, along those uh, the Tennessee River Valley counties, uh, probably staying just north of much of central Alabama, uh, but we can't rule out an isolated storm or two. Saturday, the ridge moves over the Great Lakes, uh, extending from that big 594 heat bubble over the southeastern U.S. and extending upward into the western or into the Great Lakes uh, states. And at the surface, we're uh, just pretty much under that high pressure system over New England. It's nosing down into the area, and we're seeing the front begin to dissipate. So once again, Saturday, uh, isolated to scattered showers possibility. That big system rolling across southern Canada continues to do that, and as it does, Sunday we don't see much change, the uh, heat heat bubble in place, and uh, at the surface we're seeing that front develop up in the Great Lakes and stretch down into the central U.S., but change begins to be noticeable on Monday as that system moves into southeastern Canada. That will drag a front into our location, and notice the 594 height contour is moving back towards the western U.S., 
So that is taking the oppressive and uh, terrible heat with it. Monday, it looks like the front should be down into the area of Kentucky and Tennessee. So that improves our chances for rain. But I think the better day will come Tuesday as that front continues to come down into the southeastern U.S. And uh, we see a good uh, possibility that we'll see showers and thunderstorms. <clears throat> the front doesn't exactly blast through. Uh, it's going to kind of stall out in the area. So on Wednesday, we see the troughiness beginning to develop. But once again, northwesterly flow. And as I've said before, we'll say again, we have to be cautious about this northwesterly flow. The GFS indicating a little disturbance in that flow. That may create a large mesoscale convective uh, system, an MCS, and those things can travel for hundreds of miles and potentially uh, really bust the forecast uh, since you don't expect them to hold together that long. And that is certainly what the GFS is uh, hinting at here with a large area of rain over the central U.S. And that, again, could end result be something in our area, but no skill in forecasting exact time and place right now. By Thursday, the ridge uh, still in place over the southwestern U.S. And uh, as we head into Friday, the ridge still there, but the troughiness, the weak troughiness in place over the eastern half of the country. So that means we should see for the end of uh, next week at least uh, the temperatures holding back a little bit. And uh, we continue to keep a chance for showers and thunderstorms. Looking out into voodoo country, the GFS is now pretty bullish on keeping the ridge over the western U.S. and the trough over the eastern U.S. Uh, I don't wish the heat on the uh, western U.S., but it does mean that for us, with that troughiness over the eastern half of the country, that we would stay a little bit cooler than we uh, would uh, typically. So it looks like we should uh, stay pretty seasonal with highs maybe around 90 degrees. And by the time we get out to 372 hours, uh, once again, the GFS maintaining that trough pattern over the eastern part of the country. By the way, if you viewed the, the image yesterday, the tropical system that the GFS had in the Gulf is completely gone, as we expected it probably would be. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks for tuning in to the Weather Extreme video. I expect to have the next one posted first thing on Saturday morning. In the meantime, you can always check back on the blog for later updates on Alabama's weather. Have a great day and Godspeed.